to my workshop. Now today what I thought I would do is take a break from my usual sort of work, which is making wooden wheels. I've got this chair to do. This was bought to me by a customer. Um, and as you can see, the seat is rather falling apart um, and it needs to have a new rush seat. Now this is something I do every now and again. I don't do very many, but I thoroughly enjoy it when I do. So if anyone's got any rush seats they want me to do, get in touch. I always like to do a few rush seats in a year. But this is quite a nice antique carver chair. It goes back, I hope to think, how oh, old it's probably Edwardian. Um, as you can see, it's falling apart completely. So we need to take the old rush off and then we can uh, start putting the new one on. Now before you start anything like this, make sure you take plenty of photographs so you know exactly what you're trying to get to <laughs> when you put the new one back on. So this is going to look brutal, but it's the easiest way to do it. We just want to get rid of all this rush. And this is the quickest and easiest way to do it. In years gone by, a seat such as this would have been done using real rush. It's one of the very earliest seating materials, and you would literally just go to the side of the riverbank, put up a load of rushes, and you twist them together. And uh, These days, I'm pleased to say, whilst you can still do that, and you can buy the rushes should you feel the urge to do it, uh, a much easier way to do it is to buy it in this kind of form. And this is it's still real rush, but it's been pre-twisted into this what looks like a rope. This makes it much easier for you. So you buy this in sort of, you know, one kilo bundles or whatever it is you buy it by. So you get it like that. And what I tend to do is cut it into sort of 10 metre long pieces. Now this is the bit that came right out of the very middle of the, the bundle. So it's going to be, the, it's the worst it possibly gets. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to tie it on in this corner. It doesn't need to be a particularly fancy knot, it just needs to be a strong knot. And what we do is we follow the same pattern all the way around. So we come underneath this stretcher here, pull it reasonably tight, come back over the top, and underneath there. Now you want to make sure you butt it right up against and then we come over the top and now we're going to come underneath this front one. And again, make sure you want to pull it Tight, keep it tight. And you can see where I cut it into 10 metre pieces, because if you try to do this with a big long piece, some people like to sort of put them on weaving sticks or something like that. And they're really good when the chair's nice and open like this. Once you get in close to the middle, it becomes much harder, so I don't bother. And that's the first go round. So now we just start all over again. Make sure you get it in nice and tight.
Now, one of the first things you notice is like a lot of chairs, this one is much wider at the front than it is at the back. And if we just carried on doing this, the way that we've been doing, we're going to end up at a point in the middle where it's all filled up at the back, but it's this big gap in the front where we haven't uh, got it done. So what we're going to try and do is to even out the spacing. So what I'm going to do now is every now and again, I shall just go round the stretcher at the front. And then come in like this. So what I've gained now is sort of three or four millimeters here and I'll do the same over there and if I keep doing that every now and again before you know what's happened I'll be the same here as I am on the back there. So I'm just going to keep going. Now we're getting to the end of a piece. I could try and join it on the end there and that's probably because that means it's going to end up somewhere around there but I think I'd rather have a join sort of somewhere underneath the back here. So I'll just try that there for a second while I get a new piece out. Now I'm keeping this in warm water doesn't have to be particularly hot water, just warm, just because it's, it's more pleasant for me if I keep it warm. If it's freezing cold water, it's horrible. What I want to do is to keep it, keep it damp. I don't want it soaked. So what I'm not doing is putting it all in the bucket at once. What I like to do is I take one piece out I put one piece in and so that way I've always got one piece in the bucket soaking so it's never in the bucket for more than about 10 minutes so I just tied a knot on that make sure you cut the right piece there's nothing more embarrassing than cutting the wrong piece and now I start again and all I do is just keep going and going and going and going and eventually I'll work my way across it's a couple of hours work so it's turn the radio on have regular breaks for cups of tea and chocolate biscuits if that's your thing and slowly you'll get there and as you can see we're starting to get a fairly decent pattern It's starting to come in regularly. It's nice and taut, and when it dries out, that will become very taut, which is what we want. It's just a slow, laborious process, but when you get to the end, it all seems worth it. If you find this interesting, there's a couple of other videos I've done on restoring antique furniture. There's quite a nice nursing chair one which has proved to be very popular. Not everything I do makes it on the video. In fact these days I'm making very few videos. Um, but I am using Instagram quite a lot. So if you'd like to see what I'm up to, have a look at Instagram. The details of my Instagram page are on the bottom of the screen now. If you'd like to get in touch with me, you can always do it through Instagram, through Facebook. Or you could do it, what I suppose these days, it's the old-fashioned way, which is to send me an email. I can't remember the last time I got a letter. There you go, that's the last bit pulled in. So, 
that looks really nice and firm and solid now what I'm going to do now is to leave that to dry because obviously it's still damp and then once that's done I can trim off all these little tiny bits that are sticking up and then I can just put the back back but for all intents and purposes that's done it's quite a nice little job you can tell whether you've done a decent job by where it meets in the middle and if it all meets in the middle without having any great gaps then you've done all right um, and that's a good job and that's good for another I don't know, 20 30 40 50 years so the last job is to refit this back piece I, uh, I've kept the original screws because slot headed screws are very hard to get now and then there was this little piece of trim that just fits over here and again I've kept the original nails I'll tell you what, that's not a bad seat. I rather like that. But I think it's fair to say that's a decent job. I like that. Well, I think it's fair to say that was a quick and easy video. Uh, probably not too much went on, but it's quite a useful thing to learn how to do. And I think that's come out rather well. If you enjoyed this video, go and have a look at some of my other ones. You never know, you might enjoy those as well. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.